Tafu no la with whatever we do Halei de muni skula Nyepam nene kudlukula Nyepangi raga la gena Nyepam nene kudlukula Ibulo ke nungoto ni beti sola Ibulo ke dato ni beto do Bengi Bengi kongo Nami 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 Mungkut Mungkut <laughs> Lamin <laughs> Kamukanya,
Hello everyone, welcome to lesson 11, history, this is the 11th lesson, history lesson. Uh, I am your presenter, Sheikh Tijan Sisi, I will take you through this topic. Our topic today is Christian missionary activities in the Gambia. Um, actually, we are looking at the 19th century, missionary activities in the 19th century, but if we want to understand the topic proper, we need to look at the starting of Christian missionary activities in the Gambia. Way back to the 15th century, when the Portuguese explorers first came to the Gambia. Christian missionary activities started with the coming of the early Portuguese explorers in the 15th century. For example, we have Diego Gomez built the first church, the San Domingo Church in Jufri, in the north bank of the River Gambia. This initial effort of spreading Christianity in the Gambia failed because the Portuguese were mainly interested in trade and exploration. If we are to trace the commencement of Christian missionary activities in the Gambia, we have to go back to the 15th century. Remember, the Portuguese were the first Europeans to visit the coast of the River Gambia, and not only the River Gambia, even in West Africa. Like in the Gambia, when they came, they named St. Andrews Island, Babu Island, Cabo, Santa Maria, which we have covered. In other places, like Nigeria, they gave the name Lagos. In Ghana, they gave the name um, Elmina. In Sierra Leone, of course, they gave the name Sierra Loa. In Guinea-Bissau, so the Portuguese in West Africa, they were the first Europeans to reach the coast of West Africa. And even in other parts of Africa, they were the first because they were very good at navigation at that time. So when they came to the Gambia, um, Igo Gomez built the first church in the Gambia, known as the San Domingo Church. This church was very, very, very important in the history of not only the Gambia, but West Africa. So, since this 15th century period, that marked the beginning of Christian missionary activities, because there they were offering prayers, they tried, at least they made effort to convert people into Christianity and the like. So however, we are Christian missionary work started in the Gambia after the founding of Bathos in 1816 and the arrival of the free slaves and recaptives from Sierra Leone in the 19th century. This is why I said here we are going to focus mainly on the 19th century because the early Christian missionary activities in the Gambia failed because of many, many reasons. One, they were not here to evangelize, first of all. They only took the opportunity to introduce Christianity. Two, they were here for exploration. They were not here for Christian purposes. Three, they were here for trade. So because of those reasons, they could not focus on evangelism. So as a result, their activities failed at the initial stage. After the founding of Bathos in 1816, real, real missionary work started in the Gambia with the arrival of the free slaves and recaptives from Sierra Leone. Sir Governor, or Governor Sir Charles McCarthy, the then colonial governor of Sierra Leone and the Gambia, invited many Christian missionary societies from England to serve the free slaves in the Gambia. These slaves had already ensured the acceptance of Christianity through the Church Missionary Society, that is the CMS in Sierra Leone, and the CMS sent missionaries in the Gambia. Remember, the Akus were brought in the Gambia after the founding of Bathos in 1816. Then they were mainly Christians, so at that time, Sir Governor. Charles McCarthy, who was the then colonial governor for Sierra Leone and the Gambia, thought it wise that there was need to establish Christian missionary activities in the Gambia. So he invited many missionary societies or groups from England to come to the Gambia and evangelize the new settlers as well as the natives. 
The first Christian missionary group to arrive in the Gambia was the Society of Friends, otherwise known as the Quakers. Of course, you have heard about the Quakers. They are very, very important in the history of the Gambia. They established schools all over the place, like the first school they established in Bathurst and Bacau. So they came in 1821, William Singleton, um, Richard Smith and Mrs. Hannah Killham played vital role in spreading Christianity and Western education in the Gambia. Hannah Killam, for example, was a very enterprising woman. She worked with the liberated slaves in Bathurst and Bacao, where she opened schools. So this marked the beginning of Christian missionary activities in the Gambia. Of course, apart from the Society of Friends, if you don't call them Society of Friends, you can call them the Quakers. You also have the Wesleyan Methodist missionaries. Some people call them Wesleyan missionaries, others call them Methodist missionaries. So don't confuse the two. If you understand better, you can say the Wesleyan Methodist missionaries. If you only can remember Methodists, you say the Methodist missionaries. So they too came in 1821 with Reverend John Morgan as their leader. He did much pioneering work in battles and the neighboring districts of Combo to spread Christianity. John Baker, Robert Hawkins, and Reverend James Fieldhouse played important roles in converting the natives to the Christian faith. Of course, these people are very, very important that I have named. Reverend Fieldhouse, for example, was the principal of Methodist Boys High School, which contributed greatly in translating the Bible into Wolof. Yeah, he was the first, one of the earliest schools established in the Gambia was what? Methodist Boys High School, as well as Methodist Girls High School. At that time, Reverend James Fieldhouse was one of the principals of those schools, and he was very, very instrumental in translating the Bible from English to Wolof to enable the, the, the settlers, especially those in battles, to, to, to comprehend, to be able to read and understand the Bible. So apart from the Wesleyan missionaries or the Methodist missionaries, you also have the Roman Catholic fathers and sisters of St. Joseph's of Clini in France, also came in the 19th century. They were also a very strong Christian body in the Gambia because they also played very, very important role in the Gambia. Their main aim was to convert the local people to Christianity. They established many schools. Sister Annie Mary Jovohi could be remembered for her role in education and the spread of Christianity in the Gambia. Of course, even today you will see that the Roman Catholics, they established many, many schools which we shall talk about later. Actually, in the 19th century, these were the earliest Christian bodies that visited the Gambia. Once again, let me go over them. You have the Society of Friends or Quakers. You have the, the, the Wesleyan Methodist missionaries. You have the, the Roman Catholics. Of course, I forgot to mention the CMS, the Church Missionary Society, otherwise known as the Anglicans. They also visited the Gambia in the 19th century. Now let's look at the, the contributions of the Christian missionaries to the development of the Gambia. Of course, we have to give credit to the Christian missionaries for their noble role they, they, they did towards the development of the Gambia. The first contribution we should talk about in the Gambia about the Christian missionaries was the fact that they engaged on preaching the Bible and spreading Christianity in the Gambia. This was their primary primary objective to start with. They converted many people to Christianity, they built churches and translated the Bible into local languages like Wolof, Mandinka, and other related languages. Of course, that was a very formidable contribution of the Christian missionaries. The second contribution of the Christian missionaries was the fact that they engaged in the spread of Western education. Of course, we have to give them, if not 100%, as I hardly give 100%, but I will give them 99% because of their role in Western education. They established many schools where they taught children rudimentary mathematics, how to read, write, and speak English. 
The graduates from these schools worked in the civil service, other vocational institutions We are also open to teach young boys and girls skills like bricklaying, carpentry, masonry, train, cooking, etc., etc. So that was a very big contribution uh, in the, uh, the Christian missionaries did in the area of education. Of course, they promoted Western civilization, the use of dress, the use of food, systems of marriages and architectural buildings, the way we build our houses today, and the way we, we, we dress the food we eat, the systems of marriage by registry, all this we are encouraged by the Christian missionaries in the Gambia. Christian missionaries also contributed to the development of agriculture. Of course, there also we have to give them big credits. This was done to substitute the slave trade. The missionaries introduced new crops and methods of farming. They set up experimental farms and plantations via new methods of cultivation of rice and granules via land. In 1896, an agricultural school was opened in Abuko uh, in the Kombo area. The school was closed down in 1911 due to an outbreak of yellow fever epidemic that killed most of the school instructions. But yet still we should give them credit in the area of agriculture because they taught people modern techniques of agriculture. They, they brought new seedlings and many other things. And this was done purposely to substitute the slave trade because they realized that there was need to, to to replace the slave trade, and that's why they encourage agriculture. Of course, the legitimate trade. They played very little role in the legitimate trade. This was why they even encourage agriculture, so that they can produce goods, and these goods will be traded. Instead of using slaves as items of trade, they can use those agricultural products or produce um, to replace the slave trade. The fifth point here is they also contributed to the health sector. Here also we have to give them maximum credits because they open dispensaries, clinics, maternity homes and health centers where Western medicine was introduced. In 1823, the Roman Catholic sisters started a clinic in Bathos. They greatly contributed to the augment of health facilities Diseases such as malaria, yellow fever, smallpox, etc., we are put under control. Of course, in those days, the Christian missionaries played leading role in the health sector. They serve as nurses, they serve as nuns, um, they establish health centers, dispensary homes, you know, maternity homes. So, by and large, they did very well in the health sector to promote that area. Now I move forward to the problems encountered by the Christian missionaries in the Gambia, despite of their noble contributions in various areas, as I have said, in education, in religion, in, in the health, in agriculture, in trade, they encountered a lot of problems, a lot of problems. So some of these problems they encountered are, one, one major problem they faced, faced by the Christian missionaries was lack of financial resources. They had limited funds to carry out their missions. This made it very difficult for them to accomplish their work in the Gambia because of financial reasons. Two, there was also the problem of inadequate number of Christian missionaries willing to work in the Gambia. Of course, at that time, it was not very easy. The Gambia or Africa was seen as the white man's grave. So not everyone was willing to come to the Gambia and work. A lot of yellow fever, malaria, and other diseases. So as a result of that, there was a shortage of Christian missionary personnel to work in the Gambia. They were plugged with tropical disease, as I have said. The outbreak of diseases led to the high death rates of missionaries in the Gambia. So not all, every missionary was willing to come to the Gambia and work. They could not easily adapt to the climate and harsh weather conditions in the Gambia. 
Islam was well rooted in many areas of the Gambia and it was more accommodating as the religion allowed some of the traditional practices. This was a very big challenge the Christian missionaries faced in the Gambia. Before the coming of Christianity, Islam was already in the Gambia. Although you should take note that Christianity existed as a religion before Islam. But Islam reached the Gambia before Christianity. So, going back to history, Christianity first introduced in the Gambia in the 15th century. Islam was already here by the 7th century as a result of the trans saharan trade between the North Africans and the Western Sudanese states. So before the coming of Christianity, Islam had already rooted in the fabrics of the Gambian society. And besides, Islam accommodated some of the traditional practices of the people. Many people saw it that they should accept Islam because Islam is very close to their traditional practices like polygamy, and marry more than, more than one wife, or at least you can marry up to four. Whilst on the other hand, Christianity is only advocating for one man, one wife. Six, Islam, Christianity condemned traditional practices. Example, polygamy, secret societies, the use of charms, etc. This made many Gambians not to support them. Um, some of these practices, as I said, they are close to the customs and traditions of the people, like polygamy, secret societies. Of course, in all our ethnic groups, as we have covered in previous lessons, we realized that they have their masquerades like the Kanguran, the Zimba, the Kumpo, and many other things. And some of these things are frowned at by the Christian missionaries. The use of charms, of course, has no place in Christianity. So this made many Gambians not to support the Christian cause in, in, in the Gambia at that time. Then another point you should take note was high illiteracy rates made it difficult for the missionaries to propagate their religion in the interior of the Gambia. Virtually when they came, nobody was able to read and understand the Bible. So it was not easy to transmit the, 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 the message to the people. In fact, that made them to embark on mass education uh, uh, something by establishing missionary schools we are when children we are taught how to read write and speak english language for them to be able to understand the bible and uh, of course point eight here is talking about language barrier was another obstacle faced by the christian missionaries as they were unable to speak the local languages of the people they cannot speak wolof they cannot speak mandinka they cannot speak fula they cannot speak jola Sarahule and other local languages. So it was not easy to preach to the people. The difficulty in communicating with the local people was a serious problem in spreading Christianity in the Gambia. No wonder even today the number of Christians in the Gambia is less compared to other religions. And the point nine here is they also had transportation difficulties. Poor road network, especially in the rural areas, as some places were inaccessible. In fact, that made it very, very, very difficult. If you go to places in Badim, in Kian, in Jara, of course, in Central River area, there are roads there that are not accessible, especially feeder roads that link to the main highways. Some places, you have to use donkey carts to go there. Some places you have rivers, you have other things that will make you not to be able to, to, to access those places. So that made life very difficult for the Christian missionaries to spread, their, to spread Christianity in those areas. Now, the tenth point here is opposition from traditional rulers religious bodies and some Gambian people made it difficult for the Christian missionaries to spread Christianity in the hinterland of the Gambia. The natives were unfriendly and hostile to the Christian missionaries. Of course, in those days, at that time, if you accept Christianity, 
you are seen as outcast, your family will not be happy with you. You know, so the, the traditional rulers, the, the religious bodies, leaders in the Gambia, they frowned at Christianity. And that was a very serious problem they faced at that time. People had serious mistrust for, for the missionaries and they therefore discriminated against them. That made it very difficult for them at that time. Besides, the Suninke Marut Wars of the 19th century also impeded evangelist activities of the Christian missionaries in the Gambia. The situation was very, very chaotic. Remember, the Suninke Marabut Wars lasted for over 50 years, from, 18, from the 1850s on to 1901, when Fode Kombo Sila, Fode Kaba Dumbuya, rather, was killed. So the situation was not friendly. The atmosphere was not friendly for the spread of Christianity. So the Christian missionaries, they faced a series of problems that made it very difficult to spread Christianity, especially in the interior or hinterland of the Gambia. The rivalry among different Christian missions, too, was another problem faced by the Christian missionaries in the Gambia. You have different missionary groups, as I have named them. Apart from their problem with, the, with Islam or the, the religious leaders, they also have internal problems within their various groups, like the Anglicans, the Methodists, the, the, the Roman Catholics, internal problems, the Society of Friends, etc., etc. So these were some of the problems they faced. They could not initially adopt to the local foodstuff and water that also resulted to a series of problems they faced in the, in the Gambia as adopting to the local food stop and what as climate was a real problem for the Christian missionaries. Now we move to the effects of Christian missionary activities in the Gambia. As I said, I always tell you that when we talk about effects, we are talking about impacts. We are talking about outcomes. We are talking about results or consequences of Christian missionary activity. The first effect of Christian missionary activities in the Gambia was Christian missionaries revived and spread Christianity, which had been earlier introduced by the Portuguese. They converted the liberated Africans and indigenous people to Christianity. They built churches in Banjul, Combo, St. Mary's, Bara, and Georgetown to further spread their religion. This was a remarkable achievement by the Christian missionaries. Even though they faced a series of problems in the Gambia, in the interior, but they were able to propagate, they were able to spread Christianity in the Gambia. They converted many people, not only liberated Africans, even indigenous people we are converted to Christianity and they built many churches in Banjul. Today, if you walk through Banjul, you will see many churches in the Combo area, in Bara, in Georgetown. Many churches were established. The missionaries translated the Bible into local languages like Wolof, Mandinka, Jola, and promoted literacy in them. Of course, this was one of their remarkable contributions they did because they were able to translate the Bible into local languages. Earlier, I mentioned about Reverend James Fieldhouse, the former principal of Methodist Boys High School, who translated the Bible into Wolof. Today, Wolof people can read the Bible, even Mandinka, even Jonas. The Bible was translated into those languages. Um, point three, the third impact, the Christian missionaries opened primary and high schools for boys and girls and taught them Western type of subjects like arithmetic and English language. The Methodist mission championed the establishment of, establishment of Methodist boys high school and Methodist girls high school, which later amalgamated to form the Gambia High School in 1959. 
And this high school subsequently now is called Gambia Senior Secondary School. Of course, you can give credit to the Christian missionaries. Really, the schools they establish in the Gambia are too many. Not only Methodist Boys High School or Methodist Girls High School. Even we talk about Amitage. Amitage Senior Secondary School, as it is known today, was first established by the Christian missionaries. Christian missionaries encourage chiefs to send their children to schools by giving them gifts. Amitage High School was established in Georgetown, as I said, for the sons of chiefs. The missionaries also built vocational centers where children learned skills for bricks laying, carpentry, masonry, sewing, cooking, laundry, etc. The product of the schools established by the Christian missionaries worked in the civil service as junior civil servants. Of course, today we are still getting the dividends of the Christian missionary works in the Gambia. The seventh point here is the Christian missionaries were responsible for the development of legitimate trade. They improved farming techniques and set up experimental farms in the Gambia. We have to give them credit. Of course, I mentioned about the Abuko Experimental School they established there. If you go to other places also, especially in the Kumbo area, at that time they established agricultural farms. And these farms produce goods that we are used in legitimate trade. Take note, legitimate trade replace the slave trade. Christian missionaries established health centers and clinics to treat diseases in the Gambia. They built maternity homes, they built health facilities in the Gambia, and they served in those health facilities as nurses and medical personnel. They introduced Western medicines. The nuns played an active role in the spread and acceptance of Western medicines in the Gambia. Many of them, Gambians, were exposed to short modern medicines, and today everyone is, has adopted and adopted to the call of Western medicine at the expense of our local or indigenous medicines. The Christian missionaries brought new type of architecture in church and school buildings. The missionaries erected beautiful stone and bricks houses in the Gambia. That was also another impact or result of their activities in the Gambia. Christian missionaries encouraged many converts to dress in Western types of cloth, especially on Sundays when going to church. Many local people adopted that. Also, now let's look at ways by which Christian missionaries contributed to the suppression of the slave trade and slavery in the Gambia. Of course, we also have to give them credit. For one, Christian missionaries preach against the evils of the slave trade. That was one of the reasons. Remember, when you cover the slave trade, one reason that led to the abolition of the slave trade was the fact that the Christian missionary bodies condemn the slave trade as an inhuman crime and a crime against God. So the Gambia was no exception. They preached against the evils of the trade in the Gambia. The Quakers or Society of Friends started by freeing their slaves in England and in the colonies, in the colonies like the Gambia and other places in West Africa. That was a noble contribution. They formed anti-slave trade associations to campaign against the, the trade. Example, the Wesley's evangelical movement was formed in the Gambia, and one of the, its mandates was to campaign against the slave trade. They also wrote and published books, pamphlets, articles on newspapers to expose the heels of the slave trade. Example, Richard Boxster's Christian Dictionary was also published in the Gambia. They championed the establishment of settlements to serve as homes for the free slaves. Of course, in the Gambia, they established many, many places for the settlement of free slaves. The Christian missionaries challenged cases of slave trade and slavery in courts. They also put issues of slave trade and slavery to the National Assembly or Parliament. They introduced Western education to create awareness in the minds of the people of the Gambia. That was a very lofty and noble contribution. They encouraged legitimate trade in the Gambia. 
The ninth point, they also encourage the people to focus more attention on agriculture than trade in slaves. They also establish technical and vocational skill centers for the free slaves in the Gambia. Really, if you look at ways by which the Wolof or early Wolof settlers of Bantos helped Christian missionaries. So now let's look at the ways by which the early Wolof settlers of Bantos helped the Christian missionaries. One, the early Wolof settlers helped the Christian missionaries in building churches like the Wesleyan Church and the Roman Catholic Church. Two, some Wolof converts became assistant priests and helped in the evangelization drive. Example, Sardani and Mamandi Ngom were very, very useful in this. They helped in the promotion of agriculture as Mamandi Ngom maintained the experimental farm in Bakau. They served in the homes of missionaries as domestic helpers. The Wolof also served as interpreters to the Christian missionaries because of their early Western education. So definitely, they played a leading role. Take note, the Wolof are the second people to embrace Western education in the Gambia after the Akus. So, so far so good. Um, time is not very much in our favor. So I will stop here till another lesson. Once again, this is Mr. Sisi.